Okay, with the um, the uh, coin sensors uh, covered in copper and uh, our basket assembly over there drying, um, we're going to move on here and get ready to um, really bring the whole box together. So um, we're going to be having to cement uh, several sets of separate parts, and unfortunately, that as you know by now by watching these videos, it means waiting for cement to dry before we can move on. But uh, we'll try to, to go quickly. Um, for this next step, you'll also need your glue gun. Mine's already running here, and uh, it's good to have some extra sticks on hand because we're really going to smoke through some hot glue here. So let's go around here um, on our crow box and remove any masking tape left over from previous steps. Uh, the masking tape that I'm taking off right now is from the very first step when we actually cemented the box together in the first place. And uh, once you start removing this, you can kind of get a sense for what's really holding the box together. and the the actual strength of, of those cement joints, which is one of the reasons we chose it, even though it's kind of difficult to work with, which you may also have realized by now. So once I get all this tape off, we're going to run around inside the box with the glue gun, and we are going to uh, you place hot glue on as many of these long joints as we can. Um, that is a good way to back up our primary adhesive. Um, it helps us with weather tightness keeping water out, and also uh, helps to reduce vibrations and just general noise with the crow box, which is, uh, which is good when we're working with crows that, you know, birds that startle easily. Um, so we're going to do this step now before we install too many other things in here and there's not much room to work. So uh, I'm going to uh, apply hot glue along these five edges, uh, nothing along the front yet uh, because we haven't actually put the front panel of the machine on. But I'm going to make sure my glue is nice and hot, and it is. So I'm going to get underway here and just start laying a nice bead of hot glue on top of what we already have for cement. I'm going to stop about an eighth of an inch from the top of the crow box here. Uh, we don't want to have to deal with any hot glue in the way when we go to put the lid of the machine on. Myself another stick here soon. Don't forget to reach in through the access port to do some of this work. Okay, there. I've got those joints backed up now with some hot glue that's going to be cooling. Uh, and while that does so, I'm going to install the coin sensor here. Um, you can see that it's tabbed. It has one large tab and one small tab. Uh, this means you can't put it in backwards. And this is where it lives. 
So really all we need to do to cement this in place is to put a little cement right between those tabs and drop that coin sensor right into place. So there we go, got my little bead in place. Actually I put a nice little blob there um, because I do want to make sure that this part stays in place. Drop it in there. Lift it a couple times to get that cement worked in. Just tap it towards the back. Make sure it's level. Just kind of eyeball that. Make sure it's standing up. Nice and level inside there. Doesn't need to be measured precisely. Just as long as your eyeball tells you that it's good to go. Okay, so we're going to let this sit for just a few minutes. Um, we want the uh, hot glue we placed to uh, to set up, and we also want to give the cement here a little time to set up. Let's call it 10 minutes, and uh, then we'll move on. All right, so now the uh, hot glue we've applied has uh, had a chance to cool and harden. Um, the cement on our coin sensor has set up enough that we can keep moving, so we'll keep moving. We're going to put in some shelves now. I recommend a uh, little cardboard placemat for this step. And uh, we are going to gather some parts here. We need uh, the two sled shelves. These come off the clear uh, sheet of acrylic. And then uh, these two support knees, uh, one per shelf. So the first one of these is going to be installed against the, the back wall here. I guess I should... the back wall of our crow box here. Um, and it's going to go into these slots right here, just like this. And um, we want to do uh, this rear shelf. You can see we have this, uh, there's a slot cut out of the plastic here, um, and that can be uh, positioned on either side because this piece is symmetrical. Um, I suggest that uh, for the shelf on the rear wall of the crow box that this, um, this little slot be to the right. A little something there we don't want. Okay, so, um, as you can see, this isn't a tight fit in this particular case. That just has to do with the uh, the thickness of the plastic that I'm using for these parts. Um, but what we want to do is get some cement down into there. Um, along this edge here and here, and also the bottom edge in the same place. So we're going to cement first, and then we're going to work one of these. Oh, oops, sorry. We're going to cement that shelf in place first, then we're going to work one of these supports in. Um, after the cement has cured up just a little bit. So I'm getting my cement ready here. Here we go. So we'll go all along this edge to that point. You gotta stay in place, buddy. And then also this edge. that in like we have before. Now I'm going to tilt that shelf up. If you have a tighter fit back here, you're in better shape than I am in this particular build because you may not need to cement both sides of this, but that's where I am right now. There. So I'm going to set this cement aside for a moment and uh, work this in again and try to get that straight. Now, uh, I guess I should talk a little bit about what this shelf does. We'll have one of these against the rear wall of the crow box, the one we're installing now, and then there's one on the inside of the front face, uh, front panel of the machine, and uh, these are just supports for the electronics sled that we put inside here, but I, we've made them stronger than they really need to be just in case later um, someone uh, decides to add a battery or something heavy like that to their electronics sled. We want to make sure that this part can support that. So now that... Um, this cement is starting to get tacky. You can see that this doesn't wobble as much as it used to. I'm going to put a little line right here. More of a blob, really, but straight out from where that tab is. And then I'm going to put my little support piece down here, run it through that cement pool, up into place. 
sure that gets pressed against the back wall nice and firmly. And this is my chance to check alignment. And it already looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to be happy with that. And just leave that to uh, cure here. You can see I had some leakage through onto, the, onto this uh, cardboard placemat, which is why I think it's a good idea to use one of those. Otherwise you're getting cement on your bench. We have one more of those shelves to do, and that's the one that goes inside the the um, front face of the machine. Um, and it installs in the same way. So if we look at the front of our basket here, um, I suggest that uh, this uh, tab here be down to the right. So that will put it as far away from your hand as possible when the box is assembled and you're having to reach into the uh, access port for anything. It just means a little more space inside for what you need to do. So um, I'm going to use a sheet of paper right now because I don't have another cardboard placemat, but still don't want to get gunk on my bench. So we're going to do this in the same way. We're going to cement the uh, under edge of this all the way along. Pull that aside and then do the top edge of it. partially for strength and partially to make sure that we don't get any water in here. Just give that a wiggle. Spread that cement around. And then I'm going to try to hold that kind of level until the cement just gets a little tackier. The alternative is to get something that can go right under here like that. It keeps my work level. So, and then again just like we did on the back panel, a little swipe of cement leading out from that tab, a little bulb or bead of cement there. More than I need for sure, but uh, in this case uh, it doesn't matter. It's on the inside of the machine and it just gives us extra strength. So then I'm going to work this support through that pool of cement and then right into that tab. And again, I'm going to check my alignment here, make sure that I'm happy that that shelf is upright at a good angle. So again, we come to a point where we need to let some cement set, so I would give this 15 minutes before we move on. Okay, so these parts have had enough time to sit with their cement to um, have that uh, set up sufficiently that we can keep working. Um, so we're going to pull a lot of the box together now, so I'm going to kind of organize my space a little bit better. We're going to bring in some additional parts. We're going to get uh, our rail assemblies that we put together earlier. And um, our servo spine, which I guess I should show this against a piece of cardboard just so you can see what it is. Um, which I finally peeled, so if your servo spine is not peeled, now's a good time to peel that. We also need this funny little part from the dark parts sheet. It's uh, what we call the perch tensioner. So let's see, first things first, let's get our hardware out of these rails, because now they're cemented together. Okay, so now our hardware that we were using to temporarily hold the, um, these rails together is gone, and uh, now we need to peel the other side of these rails, which we didn't do earlier. Okay, so we have one rail, if, as you may recall, um, where the lower is fused to it and the upper is fused to it. We cemented these parts. Uh, there's a second rail which has um, only the lower fused and the upper part is designed for us to be able to put on and take off. And that lets us uh, get access to our sliding uh, door for service. So the gist of what we're going to do here is, um, it's best if we put this on its back. The, the, Crow box, 
and we have our servo spine and this is tabbed remember in a way where it can't be assembled incorrectly uh, it'll only go in one way and that's the correct way so if we drop the uh, these two slots into the tabs in the back there um, we can then lower our front panel onto the machine and then we need to work this uh, servo spine in just like that so that it drops in so what we want is that when that front panel is on the servo spine is completely captive now it's got its slots in these tabs in the back wall and these front slots are in these tabs in the front panel and uh, now once again we're going to turn to our masking tape as a way to hold this uh, panel on the front nice and firmly and in alignment while we uh, cement it in place which is what we're going to do we're taking the plunge here finally going to pull everything together Give us a good sort of temporary uh, connection between the uh, front panel here and the rest of the box. Uh, as we said, the servo spine is now completely captive inside there. Uh, it's worth noting that the rails um, are designed to drop in later. I'm just going to go over this really quickly because we'll actually do this later. But the rails are designed to where you can put this tab in the back and then push this down in the front to get those into position like that. We're going to do that after we have some cement in place though. So let's get to cementing. So the idea here is that we're going to cement the inside of this edge right here so that we cement the front panel to this side panel and over here again as well. Um, there's a little bit of trouble with access for our hands, so uh, we may need to be creative in how we get some of that cement in there. We may need to actually drip it over the edge. Um, this is something that I would like to improve later in the process. So let's begin. Get my cement ready, get my little nozzle ready. So here we go. Gonna get this tube. This is a hard part to film. I'm gonna inject cement along here. Actually, it's really hard to film when you don't actually have it on camera. And back here, I'm gonna drip some cement. Just in that spot that I can't reach. And uh, as before, I like to work this joint just a little bit. Make sure that uh, the cement actually gets into the joint. And we'll do the same with this other front edge here. I'm going to reach down as far as I can. Scored a nice, nice thick bead of cement along this joint. On this side it's a little easier because you can reach in through the access port. Put the rest of the cement in. Aside for just a moment. Again, we'll wiggle this joint just a bit. Get that cement through there. And now we'll cement this servo spine too while we're here. That's one long bead all the way along the servo spine where it meets the back wall. Again, we'll work that joint to the cement get all in there. And we'll repeat that on the front. Put that bead of cement in place along there. 
work that joint just a little bit, just like that. Just flex the acrylic a little bit. And tap this downward, right up close to the tabs. There. And now, as best we can, we're going to reach inside and we are going to apply cement along this joint as well. That's another situation where you want to work that joint just a bit. We'll try to do the same over here. Okay. Now that stuff is all connected and it's fusing up. This is a good chance for us to put our rails in. So, again, discussed this earlier. Uh, if you put the rails in like this, back wall first, you can kind of just drop them in in the front, just like that. And um, same here. These are the way that this rear tab is, is uh, shaped, it actually gives us a little bit of leeway. We can insert it first and then drop it down like that in the front. Perfect. So now that those rails are sitting in place, we can add cement for those as well. The way we cement those. Now, it's worth noting that where these two small holes are here, we're going to be installing a switch there. So um, we don't want cement too far up there. So we're going to put cement on about the bottom half of this connection, like that. Work that joint a little bit, get that in there. Back here, against the back wall, we can use a full bead of cement. It goes the full length of the rail. Work that joint a little bit. So. Once you cement one rail, you want to sort of tap it outward. I'm going to go one more time here. Remember, on the front edge, only apply about a half a beat of cement. Back here, you can do the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to work that joint a little bit. I've got some cement running away from me here. I'm going to capture it. And once you have that cement applied, tap those guys outward. One last part we're going to put in on this step, and then we're going to have to let everything sit for a while um, because before we do anything else, we're going to want um, everything to be nice and strong. But we're going to do the perch tensioner now, and this is kind of an odd part. Um, it goes from the inside of the machine when you want to have the fat part up top and the narrow part at the bottom. You just push it through this slot in the back wall of the machine, and it sticks out like this. And its job is to give us various. Um, uh, options for connecting um, rubber band or spring or elastic, whatever mechanism that we use to um, to uh, put a return um, force on the perch, uh, this is where we'll hook to it. So the way I like to start with this one kind of odd, but I put a tiny little dot of cement here, and another one here, and get that pushed through the machine. And this will give us our initial bond for this part, without, waiting, without having to wait too long for drying. 
and uh, we'll be able to go back in and uh, make sure that that's weather tight also. But you can grip it just like I am here and sort of pull out from the, from the machine uh, to get a nice good bond on the inside. And this doesn't need to be perfectly straight, you know, as straight as you like it. Um, it's not a precision part. And there we go, it's already holding itself there because of the, uh, the small amount of cement that we've used. So, now's a good time to let this whole thing sit for, I would say, overnight would be best. Um, but uh, if you're in a rush, give it one hour and then we can move on to the next step.